sounds like a Seinfeld routine, but imagine being famous for inventing nothing. Tony Hoare invented what he called the Null reference in 1965. You're probably familiar with Null, or in Swift we know it as nil. It's different from zero. It indicates the absence of a value. In 2009, he called Null his billion dollar mistake, saying it has led to innumerable errors, vulnerabilities, and system crashes. This happens when the right safety isn't implemented in a language. Fortunately, Swift is all about safety, such as type safety, the idea that all variables are guaranteed to be of a certain type. The question is, how can the concept of nil work in a type safe language? For example, how could a string variable ever contain nil if nil isn't a string? Can't happen, right? In Swift, we have a special data type called the optional. The optional allows us to deal with variables that may or may not contain a value. The idea is that it does this safely and it addresses Tony Hoare's billion dollar mistake. Imagine you have a box and inside the box you know you have one of two things. No cat or a cat. What you've just imagined is a cat optional. Similarly, imagine a box that you know contains one of two things. No string or a string. This would be a string optional. You declare an optional with the data type of its contents followed by a question mark. Now that we have an optional, how do we get at its contents, or in the cat metaphor, unwrap the box? If you print the optional, the contents alone don't get output to the console. We also get information about the optional itself. If we want to just get at the contents of an optional, we use a process called unwrapping. There are a few techniques to unwrap an optional. The easiest technique is also the unsafest, and this is called forced unwrapping. If you're certain that a variable contains a value, you can get at its contents using forced unwrapping. Force unwrap an optional with an exclamation mark, and that's it. You have to be so careful with this technique though. If the optional doesn't contain a value, this will crash your app, and we're right back at the billion dollar problem. To avoid crashing your app, it's better to double check that an optional contains a value before force unwrapping. Now, this structure is so common that it brings us to the second approach for unwrapping called optional binding. Using optional binding, we can bind the contents of an optional to another variable if it exists. So this if statement could be rewritten as this. The if statement checks if the name optional contains a value if it does, it's extracted to the unwrap name variable and printed. Now I've given the two variables different names to make it easier to see what's going on, but it's common to give these the same variable name. If you have more than one optional, you can do multiple optional binding in the same line. You can also use something called optional chaining to dig down a chain of optionals. For example, strings have an optional first property that contains the first character of the string. If the string is blank, the first property is equal to nil. We can use optional chaining to go down the hierarchy, including any optionals, and bind the contents to a variable if they exist. One problem with optional binding and the if statement is that the bound variable only exists within the if statement. Sometimes it can make sense in a function to instead use optional binding with the guard statement. You may not be familiar with the guard statement. Here's a quick overview. Whereas the if statement executes a block of code if a condition is true, the guard statement executes a block of code in an else statement if a condition is false. It then exits that scope and continues the current scope if the condition was true. What has this got to do with optional binding? If you bind a variable within the if statement, the unwrapped variable is available just within the scope of the if block of code. If you bind a variable within a guard statement, the unwrapped variable is available after exiting the else block of code. This can be a useful optional binding trick. Rather than going deeper and deeper into if code blocks, increasing the complexity of our code with extra nesting depth, we can use unwrapped optional values to find in guard statements in the same scope. One last unwrapping trick. If you're happy to provide a default value for an optional, you can use something called the nil coalescing operator. That sounds tricky, but it's actually quite straightforward. Let's go right back to where we printed an optional to the console. 
Instead of unwrapping the optional, use the double question mark and provide a default value. Now, if the optional contains a value, the value will be used. And if it doesn't contain a value, the default value will be used. So that wraps up optionals for now. We've looked at unwrapping optionals using forced unwrapping, optional binding with if and guard statements, and the nil coalescing operator. This has been a sample from my video course, iOS Development with Swift. You can click here to learn more about the course. I've also written a book on iOS development. You can click here to learn more about that. I'm hoping to upload a sample video like this regularly. So if you're interested in iOS development and would like to see more videos like these, you might want to click below to subscribe. Bye.